There is a section of Kansas in which I shall never be welcome. This is the reason for it. Frontier Gentlemen. Here with an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. Now, starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall. Frontier Gentlemen. I had arrived in the town of Osawatomie by way of riverboat down the Missouri to Kansas City and then overland to this site of the famous battle. I hoped to write a story on the abolitionist John Brown, but two things prevented my doing so. The first was the weather. In a region where I was told the rain was plentiful, not a drop had fallen for more than three months. Eastern Kansas was in the grip of a severe drought. The second reason was Darby Bullman. I met him as I was doing a sketch of John Brown's cabin... He drew up in a wagon, got down, and peered over my shoulder, silent for a few minutes, then cleared his throat (coughs) and said, Hot, ain't it? Uh, Yes, very. Ain't seasonal. So I'm told. You a stranger around here? Mm Mm-hmm. Me too. Just come in town. Ain't much to see, is there? No, not much. It's a pretty fair likeness of the cabin. (laughs) Thank you. Chimney don't seem to stick out just right, though. <laughs> you don't mind me saying. Well, it's... It's only a rough sketch. Ain't uh, squatty enough, neither. Outside of that, it ain't bad. Hmm. You, uh, make a living doing that? No. No, I'm a writer. This is, this is, this is, this is a sideline. Oh, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you any good at making signs, uh, writing them? Well, I... I never... I'd be willing to pay two dollars. Won't go no higher than two. Don't need none of them fancy curly cues. Just a good old sign, nice and easy writing so those folks can read it. Do it myself, except I ain't much of a hand at that kind of thing. Well, uh, I... figure for two dollars you can draw in a picture along with the words. What kind of sign? Well, you write it out. I'll tell it to you slow. Well, all right. Just a minute. Let me... Uh, all right. Go on. Darby Bullman. Darby. D E. Uh, D-A-R. Oh, sorry. Darby. Bullman. B-U-L-L. L-L-M-E-N. King of the Rainmakers. Of the Rainmakers. We'll guarantee to... We'll guarantee... To fix it to rain for the price of $1,000. Uh, well, would you prefer guarantee to bring forth rain for the price? Of... Fine, fine. Bring forth rain for the price, price of $1,000. Price of $1,000. Yes. That's right, yes. Right. Now, what kind of a picture would you figure to draw with that? Well, what would you suggest? Oh, I don't know. Something good and wet, though. You <laughs> Give them the idea. You're not serious, Mr. Uh, Bowman. Sure, I'm serious. You think I'm flapping my gums to make wind? You you can actually make it rain. I've been doing it now on five years. How? Oh, I got my methods, mister. Don't you worry about that. A thousand dollars is a lot of money. Sure it is. But it's a sight less than what these home suckers is going to lose and it don't rain. <laughs> Come to think of it, you know, I'll be needing an assistant. You want the job? Well, Pay I... you $50 in feed. Well, what are the, the requirements for an assistant? Oh, ain't nothing to it. You get that sign made. I got me a big roll of paper in the wagon yonder. Then we, we stick the sign up over the wagon and drive through the town. As soon as we get us a likely crowd gathered, I make the speech, and you wait to start the collection. Uh, a small point, but supposing they don't believe you? Ain't human nature not to believe me. Cows and crops is perishing for one rain, ain't they? Yes. Uh-huh. A fellow like me comes along and gives them rain. <laughs> They'll believe me. Hmm. Have you ever failed? No, no, no. <coughs> Mr. <coughs> say, oh, what's your name anyhow? Huh? Kendall. Oh, Kendall. <coughs> you, you see that fellow coming this way herding them cows? Yes. Oh, wait, I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. <coughs> Get over there, you rich case of work. <coughs> Morning, stranger. Morning. Them cows of yours kind of scrawny, ain't they? I 
Sure are, mister. Unless when we get some rain mighty soon, ain't gonna be no better than rawhide. Hey, and I guess your troubles is over, stranger. Is that so? Yeah. You're talking to Darby Bowman, king of the rainmakers. Uh, this is my assistant, uh, 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 Slim Kendall. That so? Yes, sir. If and you want a good big rain, you come on down to town at five o'clock. Tell your friends. I got the makings for the wettest rain you ever see. Bring it right down from the cloud. Ain't no cloud. Not right yet, there ain't. But that's what I aim to scare up. Hey, you be willing to pay maybe fifty dollars for an inch of water in your fields? Mister, you do that, I'd be willing to pay a hundred. Oh, uh, I ain't agree, man. Like I say, my wagon will be in the middle of the town at five o'clock. You tell your friends. I surely will, mister. Sir, I surely want to... Yeah. See the way it is, Kendall? I get me 20 fellers like that, pay $50 a piece, I get me a 1000 <laughs> But how can you guarantee that, I mean, what do they do if you can't produce the rain? Didn't you hear me get through telling him? It'll be the easiest $50 you ever made, Kendall. Now, you get going on that sign. I got to start mixing up the makings. Now, this here's going to be the wettest county in Kansas. Come tomorrow. Of all reading filters, cigarettes, can't filter that, can't filter that. It makes good sense when you smoke, can't, can't. Filters that of all other brands of cigarettes can't taste the best, can't taste the best, richer taste than all the rest. Can't filter that. I was torn between curiosity and common sense. The one counseled me to stay with Darby Bullman, to act in whatever assistant capacity he saw fit, and the other warned me to put as much distance as I could between the rainmaker and myself. So, common sense lost. I'm a newspaper correspondent, and there was something about the fat little man that intrigued me. So I made the sign, complete with a soaking wet landscape as a background. Bullman was immensely pleased. At exactly five o'clock, we drove the wagon into town, and drew up outside the sheriff's office. As for my instructions, I began beating on a large saucepan with a heavy iron spoon. Right. A small crowd began to gather. Right. Gather around, folks. Come in real close. Uh, that's a little slim. All right, gather around. So they don't have to string my vitals. Uh, that's just fine, just fine. Now I guess you can all read so you know what that there sign says. Yeah, we see what it says. We ain't so sure what it means, though. It means what it says, mister. I'm here to bring you rain. And when I say rain, I don't mean no tittle and spit. I mean a goose grounder. A regular gully washer. I mean to make it wet enough to bog a snipe. That's what it told me. That, that's what it said this morning. Yeah, let me go yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, here. What's your business, mister? Uh, you can read, can't you, friend? I ain't your friend, mister. I'm Sheriff Finnick. I am to keep law and order in this here county. You creating a disturbance of the peace? Well, no such thing. Me and my assistant Slim, we're setting up a business deal. Like it says, $1,000 and I make rain. Ain't possible. You hear that? Sheriff says it ain't possible. Well, here's what I say. 24 hours. You give me 24 hours, and if there ain't a puddle of water in every pothole in this street, nobody pays me nothing. Bowman, we had fellas around these parts before claiming they could bring down weather. The last one got run out on a rail. I'm willing to take the medicine same as him, if and I don't make good. Yeah, thousand dollars, a heap of money. Sure is. You got proof you can do what you say? Where else you brung the rain? Where else? I'll tell you where. Out to California. I went down the Sacramento Valley two years back so you could take a boat from Marysville down to Sacramento and never touch dry land. Hey, I don't see no harm if it's a guarantee. But uh, we got to make it legal like. Suits me. Anything you say. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Go over and fetch lawyer Woolsack. Tell him to come on over to the sheriff's office. We need some papers made. Now, I got 
got it written up clear and understand it. Now, now wait, just read it, will you? Well, the consideration of the mutual covenants herein contained, the parties hereto have agreed and do agree as follows. Wherefore and whereas. Yeah, uh, you can get over the wherefores and whereases, Collie. Uh, what do it say? In brief, a corporation in this town agrees to sell shares and to utilize such monies collected to pay Darby Bullman the sum of $1,000 upon delivery within 24 hours of one inch of natural waters. Mm. One half of the sum to be paid on signature of this document, and the other half to be paid when the task is completed. Mm. If rain is not forthcoming within the stipulated time, all money shall be returned by the party of the first part, etc., etc. <laughs> well, now that sounds mighty fine. What do you say, Slim? Clear and concise. Now, what ain't in the papers is what I'm telling you, Bowman. Now, if this here's some kind of gouging, you and your pal ain't going to be in no condition to try it no more. You remember that. I ain't got time to worry about that, Sheriff. Let's sign them papers. I got a mess of work to do. Yeah. Sign right here. <laughs> That's my mark. Well, now, ain't that something? All that there big talk, he can't even write his name. His mark is perfectly legal, Sheriff. Now, you, sir. Uh, right you are. J. Mm. B. Canoodley. Uh, oh. Kendall. That's right. <clears throat> Excellent. Now, uh, I shall sign for the corporation. Collier Woolsack. Let me through. Make way. Oh, we got trouble, boys. Sounds like Mrs. Cunningham. What is this I hear, Collier Woolsack? Sheriff Finnick. Business affair, dear lady. Nothing to worry Don't about. Don't mealy mouth, Mr. Woolsack. There's devil's work. Oh, oh no, no, Mr. Finnick. No, I forbid it. I don't see how you rightly can forbid anything, ma'am. I got a contract here all signed legal like. It's the devil's work. Are you a man of temperance? If you mean, do I take a sup of snake poison? No, ma'am, I ain't a man of temperance. This town will not suffer the evils of intoxicating liquors, nor the workings of the devil. <laughs> I ain't no devil, ma'am. Uh, I think you misunderstand, madam. Uh, Mr. Bullman is not intoxicated. He's a rainmaker. You, sir, are in the presence of a lady. Uh, How dare you speak to me in that tone? Sheriff, I demand that you put a stop to this devil's work immediately. No, now, now, don't you worry about a thing, Mrs. Cunningham. There ain't gonna be no liquoring or carrying on, I promise you. It is against the laws of nature. Only the great rain maker up yonder has the right to create rain. I forbid you to attempt such a thing. The women's crusaders will be called out to put a stop to it. I warn you, now, Sheriff. Now, there ain't no need of that, Mrs. Cunningham. I have nothing more to say. We have put the devil out of Osawatomie. He will not return in the guise of these two wicked men. Liquor and sin. Liquor and sin. <coughs> Somebody's wife? Uh, not no more, Kendall. Uh, buried, too. Talked him to death, some say. I ain't having no trouble with Mary Elizabeth Cunningham or them women's crusaders. No, sir. Now, you boys better get out of town. Well, we got a legal signed paper. Ain't that so, Slim? Uh, definitely so. Uh, there's no backing out of it, Sheriff. Less than you want to pay the thousand dollars by default. Just 24 hours is all I need, fellas. Maybe less. Then you'll have your reign. And that old female buzzer won't have nothing to say. Mister, you listen here to what I'm telling you. If you don't come through with that reign, I'll turn you both over to the women's crusaders. And what they'll do to you will make a lynching party seem like an evening social. You got 24 hours. If it's new, Plymouth's got it. Got it. The 59 Plymouth's got it if it's new. If it's new, if it's new. The 59 Plymouth is at your Plymouth dealers now. It's new, it's wonderful, and it's here. New styling to make your heart sing. Plymouth for 59 has that fine car look. New Fury models at new lower prices. New swivel seats swing you in when you enter, swing you out when you leave. New push-button heater, world's simplest temperature control. New Golden Commando V8, biggest engine in the low-price field. New Miramatic mirror, new automatic headlight dimmer, new sport deck, new everything. See the completely new 59 Plymouth. Drive the completely new 59 Plymouth at your Plymouth dealers now. Darby Bullman and I left the town and went to a field a mile or two away. The rainmaker scurried about, unloading sacks from the wagon, contents unknown. Then we wrestled two immense cauldrons down to the ground. 
While I built fires under the containers, Bullman emptied the sacks and began to stir in a liquid which he poured from large jars. A great cloud of dense smoke began to rise into the night, spreading oily, black, and with it arose a most incredible stench. If nothing else, the heavens would weep at that alone. <laughs> what is it? My own chemical invention. Ain't nothing else like it. I should hope not. <laughs> There. That ought to do it. All we got to do now is to keep her good and hot and wait. Oh, she's rising just fine. Might get something sooner than I figured. Wind's right. Yes, sir. Shouldn't be too long. We spent the night in the field, alternately napping and tending the fire. At dawn, there were only gray wisps rising from the cauldrons, and the sky was cloudless. Bullman whistled cheerfully as we loaded the wagon, then made our way back to the sheriff's office. Well, you don't seem particularly worried. <laughs> Ain't no reason I should be. You neither. From that sky, I'd say there wasn't any rain within a hundred miles. You'd say that, huh? Well, we got a few hours to go yet. Whoa. Whoa. Morning, boys. Oh, morning. Mighty dry start for a rainy day. Yes, that's a fact. Here you was making lots of smoke down the road away. Old Har Har, he said there was a powerful stink when he took the cows out this morning. Oh, so? Some of the fellers ain't feeling so happy waking up this morning not finding no rain. That's so. Oh, morning, Sheriff. Morning. Well, mighty nice of you to save me the trouble of coming out to get you. There's something wrong, Sheriff? You know, doggone well, something's wrong. Another hour, this town's gonna be bellering for your skin. Rain. <laughs> Ain't gonna be no rain, you know it. 24 hours, like the paper says. Ain't but a mite after nine now. We still got uh, nine hours to go. Six o'clock this evening is finishing time. Well, I ain't taking no chances. Both of you's gonna be locked up. But why? Why? Because I'm sworn up hold of peace, that's why. Folks around here's having a bad time with this dry spell. They're touchy enough to get mean. And that Mrs. Cunningham and her crusader lady as well. I don't want no trouble. You get in that cell and stay there. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't worth threatening, Slim. She'll rain by and by. Mm, inside. Wouldn't care to send in some breakfast, would you, Sheriff? I'll send out for some. Sheriff! There's going to be trouble. A bunch of men up the street, they saw Bullman and Kendall come into your office. They're talking about trickery. They're, they're ugly, very ugly. I knew it. And I my knew wife it. was at a meeting last night. The Crusaders. Mary Elizabeth Cunningham has got the women worked up. Mrs. Wolsock accused me of working with the devil. This sure must have been some town before that leaky mouth woman cleaned it up. Listen, they're coming. Now, look, a bargain's a bargain. We agreed 24 hours. Oh, you ain't sticking to that crazy talk, are you? You know there ain't going to be no rain. If you're lucky, I can stop them from lynching you. Maybe just tarring and feathering will be enough for him. It's highly illegal. Highly illegal. Or my idea. I think you'd better unlock the cell. No, sir. You stay right there. He's off, boy. That ain't no call to get excited. We aim to keep them orange skunks out and spring them up. There ain't no rain. Not a lot of bad smell. My old woman has got the heaves on account of that stink. Turn him over to the sheriff. We'll take care of him. I just heard it came over the telegraph. Oh, it's it? raining. Rain. Well, rain. All over. All over to Ottawa, well, down the line to Osage City, Lawrence, Topeka, Can Kansas City. It's well, raining. It ain't, it ain't raining here. Our contract specifically yeah. calls for rain in Ottawa. And unless the provisions of the contract are... What was that? Well, it weren't my stomach. That's for sure. Hey, take a look out the window, boys. Where that cloud right, coming in. Hey, oh, 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 oh. Mr. Bullman, I'd say you are a very fortunate man. Ain't nothing fortunate about it. Purely scientific is all. Never fail. But uh, between you and me, it might be a good idea if we got out of here. Darby Bullman received the remainder of his fee. And in a torrent of rain, we drove out of Osawatomie. 
We didn't escape the downpour until the next day, and were then some 50 miles south of the town. And from what I've heard, the storm lasted for three days. And the damage caused by the flooding river will long be remembered. As will the name of Darby Bullman. It's no surprise to anybody that the attractive and inexpensive new radios have proved popular. It's no surprise, that is, to anyone who listens to CBS radio. With so much in the way of music, comedy, drama, variety, and news coming your way every day on CBS radio, more than one radio around the house is more than a convenience. It's almost a necessity for anyone who has a daily routine. The man in the house wants to come home to an attractive home and an attractive wife. But household chores in themselves are rarely inspirational. The smart homemaker is one who refuses to let her regular responsibilities get her down. She gets her work done every day, but she gets her entertainment in, too. She has a radio in the kitchen as well as the living room. Chances are she has a portable radio as well to follow her from one task to another around the house. She knows why the inexpensive new radios are so popular. And she knows the value of CBS radio, too. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.P. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Jack Crucian, Stacey Harris, Virginia Gregg, Charles Seal, and Jack Moyle. Join us again next week for another report from the Frontier Gentlemen. Bud Sewell speaking. <laughs> 